would certainly be a good to use the hydrodynamic models as well, uh, which I think we'll be talking about later. Anyway, next up uh, we have uh, Dr. Des Whitfield. Uh, Des has been working at the Department of Ag um, at Tajura for 40 years. <coughs> so the name changes, so Department of Ag is for, uh, uh, And for the last seven years he's been working on um, uh, satellite uh, crop use of, of uh, water use of crops. And I should say crop use of water, and then you have to touch back from the environment. Okay, thanks. So the, um, I, I'm, I'm talking about a project that's involved a, a team of people that, uh, and, and you can see that uh, there's one name there that stands out, Mohammed is part of that team, and we've been using satellites in, re in combination with a, a lot of other information. But the aim was that um, we, we were going to attempt for the first time in Australia to use sea biometric approaches to estimate ET or water use by crops on the ground or, or, or by land surfaces on the ground. And uh, particularly the emphasis at, at the time in 2007 when we started this work was that um, the, we need, we want to investigate the um, possibility of using Landsat information to uh, get some understanding and quantify, if possible, water use and irrigation water requirements of crops and pastures in irrigation regions. So that was the main driver for the work. But of course, uh, satellites don't have much regard for uh, paddocks or farm boundaries and or state boundaries. So included in the information that we were collecting, there was information on a couple of acre sites on the Murray in particular, including the Hatter and the Farmer echo sites. So as a, um, as a throwaway, if you like, we got some information that we could compare with the farming system, the irrigated farming <coughs> systems that uh, refer to the Hatter and the um, farmer systems. So the approach basically was, um, yes, very much to uh, investigate the application of metric, the, uh, that's a particular algorithm that's, uh, that was developed over a period of time from Yes, that uh, that uh, was used to um, being produced in America to uh, estimate ET of uh, crops and irrigated crops in particular. So that that was the main part. That was the main emphasis of the project. That um, and to apply that to uh, associate. So we want to associate those ET measures with land use on ground weather and the vegetation status of, of what we're looking at inside paddocks or, or, and or areas on the ground. And that, that, that um, vegetation status revolved around the uh, associated measures of NDVI, which is the most common measure of vegetation status in the satellite world. So land use, the uh, ancillary data that was used, this is where Mohammed and the spatial science scientists really come into their own, well, way beyond my appreciation of what can be done. but. Um, so the land use information was derived from the likes of Sunrise 21 up in the Sunraysia region and or the Golden Valley horticultural censuses that are conducted or were conducted on a routine basis in this part of the world. So there was some land use information we associated with the ET maps and we needed to take account of the weather at the same time so we were collecting information at the time of the satellite overpass as to what the uh, weather was on the ground, that was, and, and there we, were, that was the uh, measure of evaporative demand at the time of the overpass was measured as ET naught or ETR. The difference being the they're, they're, they're different versions of uh, evaporative demand. The uh, vegetation status, as I said, was measured by NDVI, which is standard measure. So th this. Um, this is a, uh, a simple example of the map, if you like, of ET derived from satellites. And, and I was just going to uh, give this as a throwaway, but um, pe people from this part of the world recognise this very well, that um, we have the, uh, if I can work this. There it is, it's up on the back wall. So this is the uh, Golden River channel, Shepparton just here, 
we're about in there somewhere. There's the Chef East Orchards, the uh, Ardmona <coughs> Orchard area. But, but you can see at the end of the drought, this, this was uh, a measure at the end of the drought from the satellite, Waranga Basin. But uh, the, uh, a large part of the water use at the end of summer was associated with the river channel and there was still some irrigation, very limited irrigation associated with, very, very much with orchards, broken, broken river here. So that's the sort of information we were, we were using and, and the likes of Mohammed and his team were associating that with land use. And so, and this is the sort, so once, once you overlay land use, we have uh, individual paddocks. We know what from uh, the land use the uh, other information associated with those paddocks, we know what's being grown in those paddocks. So all, all in all, and, and of course we're uh, measuring the, uh, the weather at the same time. Oops, I've just gone, gone too far. So basically the, uh, we're combining the uh, satellite information with the uh, ground-based information, the weather information at the time, and we're trying to make some inference about how water use is related to what's happening on the ground. That, that's the principle. And if we, when we started to uh, look at the uh, riparian system, the appropriate land use maps were the, well, the EV, maps of EVC. So were, were, did we get the same sorts of response? I've skipped a few here. So this, this is the, so, sorry about this, I'll take you back a little bit. This is the response typ typical for uh, crops and pastures. And what, what we got was a, uh, and, and what you see is, up here we have the rate of water use, if you like, uh, in relation to the uh, amount of vegetation on the ground. And what we what we see typically for, for crops in irrigation areas is there's a uh, an increase in the rate of water use with the amount of vegetation as seen from the satellite. That's the basic relationship. And this this was um, there's a couple of examples there for horticultural crops, but but this was repeated so often that it became monotonous. And the, with, with, with some minor variations. So, and, and, but, and we started then to compare what we were seeing with uh, some early reports of what was uh, published for irrigated crops in America, which showed that uh, ET, NDVI, the high rates of ET were associated with a whole range of NDVI depending on the amount of water in the system. But basically the Americans said that all, all the observations should fall in for of, um, irrigated crops, could or should fall in this triangle. And that's at the base. That's, so that triangle there is enclosing our observations. So how does this apply, for argument's sake, to riparian systems, where, which are described in our terms by EVC maps? So the one on the left is uh, just the general relationship that we saw for one image at the end of the drought for um, Barma Forest. But there, there's a lot of points there that uh, you can see how they relate to, to the triangle that ET in the forest is very much associated with that same triangle. Few, few major points of differentiation is that uh, here we have some observations that, uh, that uh, rates of ET are higher than expected of irrigation, irrigated crops, that uh, high rates of ET are expected where there's water on the ground over here. And in some cases there's evidence that there's, uh, that, that the uh, vegetation as shown by the Hatter for argument's sake is uh, less, r lower rates of ET in some of the vegetation than expected on the basis of irrigated crops. So basically we have a framework via this triangle that says that we can start to relate the wa expected water use in these systems, both irrigated crops and the uh, ecocytes to, to the NDVI. But we can do, oops, but we can do a little bit better than just the composite. Each of these, so th there's one uh, point I, I missed that um, each of the points in the uh, crop diagrams related to fields, field averages of NDVI and ET. In this case, it, we we have apparently a lot of observations for um, the ecocytes because each dot now represents the 30 metre by 30 metre estimate that Mohammed was talking about previously from the satellite. But basically, so now we're looking at, um, I, I wasn't born knowing what the uh, symbols refer to, but 
uh, GWWV is wetland veg, so, so we can have a look at the uh, responses on each of the, the EVCs that exist within a um, within each of the uh, ecosites. And, and these, these are the smaller areas in the farmer where we're looking at the um, PG, LSW. One there is unnamed, that's the, uh, I'll, I'll stay away from the terminologies. And, and with these data, because, because now we have a framework for interpreting this information that uh, we can make comparisons between sites. So for example, is the, um, RGW classification in the Varma and the Harara, are they comparable? Can we, can we see similar responses in the different vegetation types, even though they may be different, a little bit different depending on who's done the classification? Plains woodland for Varma and for Hatter. So that's one sort of comparison that can be done so we can start to understand qualitative changes, what, what's happening within the um, ecocytes, but also we can make, make um, now do analyses of changes over time. So the previous data came from the drought in the 2008 area. And they were, so we went, or, or Catherine Sheffield, another member of the team went back and compared the uh, images from 1993 pre-drought with the uh, post-drought data. And for the end of, this is the vegetation response now, for the vegetation response, big changes that range from a, uh, a large decrease to a large large increase. And the change, the equipment changes in the ET were similarly mapped. Not, I won't go into the detail there, but in cases, in some cases there were decreases, some cases there were increases. You can see that the uh, increases where, where the rates of, e rates of water use were greater after the drought than before the drought were associated very much with uh, waterways within the, within the forest. And the overall conclusion from those sorts of analyses was that the um, NDVI decreased, the, the amount of vegetation decreased during the uh, drought in most of the uh, EVCs, but more important, or, or just as importantly, the, uh, the rates of decrease seen in the rate of water use of the different EVCs was more sensitive and decreased to a greater extent than did the amount of foliage. That means that the ET measures are providing us with independent source of information about the functioning of the vegetation in, in those systems. So the, the uh, fr from overall from the uh, project that uh, the understanding of water use requirements given us a, um, some information about ir for irrigators and how to provide uh, minimal amounts of water to uh, grow irrigated crops and the um, potentially an improved ability to ensure that environmental water application allocations are meeting the needs of environmental assets. That um, water management can either be in terms of flooding needs, as um, Mohammed was describing, that the, uh, and, and or the baseline water requirements of different vegetation to maintain canopy cover, to maintain the uh, operation of the systems in terms of providing the water for the use by the existing stands. Those um, relations, so, so and, and the sources of water available to, to vegetation in the um, natural system can be either the surface water and or rainfall, and, and, in, and we can investigate the, uh, the maps and the responses that we see in the different vegetation classes in terms of um, rainfall, the hydrograph, distance from the, distance from water source, and start to understand the operation of the hydrodynamic, hydrodynamics within those systems, which we do, which we can't do at the moment. So, I think that uh, basically we can do two sorts of things with these data, and, and that's the basic asset monitoring, put put numbers on what's there, and, and, and write reports about it, and, and talk about the condition and so forth, in terms of both the um, water use rates and the amount of vegetation that's there, what the condition is. But also we can start to tackle getting a better understanding of, of water or water limitations on the different within, within these assets. And so we can start to build up our information and understanding of how the how these systems actually work. So 
reversing those. I, I think that uh, for natural resource managers, this is the final slide, I think, that uh, satellite data are a power of key to improved understanding of water use and water management by systems within these, within the uh, high value exercise. And they offer an affordable routine objective, etc., etc., monitoring assessment of resource conditions and water studies. Thanks.